there is deficiency of enzyme one or more enzymes in the adrenal cortical hormone synthesis the effects are produced because of two reasons effects are produced due to two reasons first there is a deficiency of one set of hormones subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder Let us begin with the proper topic that is congenital adrenal hyperplasia. What exactly this is? It is a group of metabolic disorders. So, it is an inborn error of metabolism. It is a group of metabolic disorders characterized by deficiency of enzymes involved in cortical that is adrenal cortical hormone you can write adrenal cortical hormone synthesis right there is deficiency of enzyme one or more enzymes in the adrenal cortical hormone synthesis the effects are produced because of two reasons effects are produced due to two reasons first there is a deficiency of one set of hormones and there is second there is accumulation of intermediates which themselves have their own action or they can cause excess of other adrenal cortical hormones so the effects are produced because of this condition Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, important thing to remember, all of them, virtually all of them show autosomal recessive inheritance. Please remember they all are autosomal recessive. I am trying to go slow, you can always increase the speed once you are revising. It is a difficult topic, so I have deliberately decreased my speed of speaking. So, inheritance autosomal recessive in all of them. Now, obviously the question arises, ki what exactly, why do we call it as hyperplasia? So, why we call it as hyperplasia? Because the size and thickness of the adrenal cortex is increased. There is hyperplasia of the cells. Why? Because most varieties, they have deficiency of cortisol. This deficiency of cortisol leads to loss of inhibitory effect on ACTH. This results in large amounts of ACTH being produced and this ACTH causes hyperplasia of the gland. So, size is more, function is not there. That is called as hyperplasia. Since it is congenitally present, so we call it as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. When you do ultrasound, you will find hypertrophy of the gland. And obviously, whenever there will be one important point here, whenever there will be large amount of ACTH, if you remember from basic days, ACTH when it is produced in large amount, it also stimulates melanocytes. It has a MSH-like action, melanocyte stimulating hormone-like action. And so, they are prone to, these patients with CAH are prone to hyperpigmentation. Although hyperpigmentation is seen only in the severe forms and that too it is found that it is more common in males as compared to females for reasons that are still unknown. But in general hyperpigmentation will be found in some degree of hyperpigmentation will be found in these patients. In males who have raised ACTH levels you will have testicular hyperpigmentation to be present. If it is found that males who are having raised levels of ACTH these males will have some degree of hyperpigmentation in the scrotal region. Normally, the scrotum till puberty comes. In males, it is always, male babies, it is always pink in color. But these children can have a black colored scrotum because of hyperpigmentation produced by ACTH. So, if somebody asks you, male with CAH did not undergo virilization, but pigmentation was seen in the scrotal area. What is the reason? The reason is more ACTH causing hyperpigmentation. So, the next thing is, what are the types of CAH. The types depend upon the enzyme which is getting deficient. 
first variety is 21 hydroxylase deficiency 21 hydroxylase deficiency is considered to be the most common variety of CAH it is seen in about 90 percent cases second is your 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency which is the second most common and it is seen in 4 to 8 percent cases depending upon prevalence third is 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency which is a rare form fourth is 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase deficiency together these four forms constitute almost 99 percent cases and then we have the rare variants which although they have a presentation similar to CEH, certain other classifications do not include them in the classic CEH variety. So, rare variants will include two entities that are important for your super specialty exam. First is lipoid hyperplasia. Lipoid hyperplasia occurs due to STAR protein deficiency, the star protein which I had told it is catalyzing the cholesterol movement, it is the rate limiting enzyme. And second is your syndrome called as antler bixler syndrome. More about this syndrome we will be discussing at the end of this discussion. So, this is the varieties of CAH. Let us move towards the clinical presentation in CAH. What is the clinical presentation? First thing that you need to know that in all varieties of CAH, there is absolute or relative deficiency of cortisol. So, they all will be prone to hypoglycemia. It may be frank hypoglycemia in the severe forms or it may be simply hypoglycemia occurring when there is a illness, injury, shock, stress, surgery etc. So, they will be prone to hypoglycemia because of relatively low cortisol in all forms. Then second, they, depending upon mineralocorticoid levels, many of these children can have either mineralocorticoid excess or they can have mineralocorticoid deficiency. If there is mineralocorticoid excess, this will produce a crisis called as salt retaining crisis. In salt retaining crisis, if there is more mineralocorticoid, so what will happen? You can well imagine there will be hypertension, there will be hypernatremia and there will be hypokalemia right if there is a deficiency of this then it will produce a crisis called as salt wasting crisis also called as salt losing crisis in salt wasting crisis you will have shock in the patient or hypotension hyponatremia and hyperkalemia And third, you, you can have problems in the genitalia. Genitalia problems will occur due to, if it is a normal genitalia, fine. But in utero, if it is a male and he does not get androgens, or if it is a female, she gets androgens more than what she needs, there may be in utero virilization, there may be in utero changes in the genitalia. So, genitalia in CAH patients can either be normal in some forms, or it may show ambiguous genitalia. What is ambiguous genitalia? They were earlier also called as pseudo-hermaphroditism, but that term has now been discarded. Some old examiners still use them, but remember that this term is no longer used these days. Ambiguous genitalia is the term that you favor. What is ambiguous genitalia? See, male having male-like genitalia, female having female-like genitalia is fine. But a genitalia where simply by looking, you cannot say that this is male or female, that is called as ambiguous genitalia. So, males may sometimes have a female like genitalia. You will have males with micropenis, bifid scrotum and undescended testes. So, it will look like female. But if you palpate, you will find gonads, testes being present, undescended testes being present. And you will find that there are no ovaries. When you do genotype, you will find it is XY. So, that is called as male with ambiguous genitalia. Then you will have female with ambiguous genitalia. Female means her genotype will be XX. But when you look at the baby's genitalia, there will be hypertrophy of the clitoris, we call it as clitoromegaly. Along with that, there will be fusion of the labioscrotal folds. So, it will produce a scrotum-like appearance. So, these are called as ambiguous genitalia. They are a significant problem, not only in utero, but even later in life. 
gender allocation in these children is problematic because many times once diagnosis is made you come to know that this is not a male you this is a female so how to rear the child is a problem a separate problem in itself briefly we'll be talking about that aspect as well so this is a typical example of how ambiguous genitalia looks like simply by looking at the genitalia you cannot say this is a male or a female child actually this person this photograph which i have taken from one of the articles this was a patient who had actually mosaic there was a xy chromosome also present and some turner syndrome like cell line 45 xo was also present and there was deficiency of 21 hydroxylyl deficiency in these in this patient as well so this is how a typical example of ambiguous genitalia looks like so genitalia by looking if you cannot assign the gender or if it is the gender is reverse of what you expect from the genotype you call it as ambiguous genitalia so three types of presentation you need to remember hypoglycemia all of them mineralocorticoid excess or deficiency one of them will be seen genitalia normal or ambiguous will be seen in ceh kis mein kaun sa hoga one way is the tables flow charts which i will be discussing in the end more importantly you need to understand why particular thing is happening in a particular syndrome and for that we need to discuss the individual ceh disorders for, let's first begin with 21 hydroxylase deficiency nelson has given almost 8 9 pages to this topic and it is the most common ceh